believe in fairy tales? Or is it love at first sight with a little munchkin face? And when it comes to the ancestry of a breed, how many centuries do you prefer? Nine or 10? How about 18? Folklore and fact, combined with a spunky personality and a deep and abiding affection for their owners, can create a great relationship with a dog. Knowing what to expect in a breed and matching those traits to your expectations requires a little research. Ask yourself this question, which woof's for me? In this episode, we'll find out why the Pembroke Welsh Corgi has been the favorite breed of the royal family for more than 80 years, and why some historians think the pug has been around for nearly 2,000 years. First up, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi, a herding breed that the American Kennel Club ranks as the 22nd most popular dog in the country. Low set, strong, and sturdily built, the Pembroke is one of the oldest of the herding breeds. Some say Vikings brought the breed to Wales in the 10th century, but there are no records. Without a traceable ancestry, the most commonly held belief is that as far back as 1107 AD, these little guys, or a slight variation, were brought to Pembrokeshire, Wales by Flemish weavers. The weavers, who were also farmers, mated the corgi to cattle dogs to produce strong herding characteristics. With a body that's longer than it is tall, an acceptable translation of corgi in Welsh is dwarf dog. The Pembroke Welsh corgi has some lookalikes that are distinctly different breeds. One near twin is a much older breed, but is not a close runner-up in popularity to what's known as the Queen's corgi. Name, ancestry, and doppelgangers aside, the fairy tale that surrounds this breed has added to its mystique even before the AKC recognized it in 1934. The origin of the Pembroke Welsh Corgi is as a farm dog in Wales, a general purpose farm dog, but legend has it that they were actually fairy dogs, that the fairies would ride the corgis. And in fact, if you look at a Pembroke Welsh Corgi, there's a, a vertical line just behind the shoulder that we call the fairy saddle. A true working dog, the corgi's thick double coat helps in all weather conditions to insulate and protect the animal. If somebody is interested in a corgi, I would one caution that they do shed. They are superior shedders. If you're okay with fur as a condiment in your house, then yes, a corgi is for you. They are great though. If, if you're looking for a small dog, a big dog in a small body, that's a corgi. The undercoat and outer coat require regular brushing and shedding is pronounced in the spring and fall. But a good brushing helps and will remove any dirt that may accumulate on the corgi's coat. Once in a while, the occasional bath is needed. This confident and enthusiastic breed is primarily a companion dog and family pet, described as loving, protective, and playful. The breed standard states that adult males should weigh approximately 27 pounds and females slightly less at 25 pounds, both should be between 10 and 12 inches in height and should give the impression of substance and stamina in a small package. Often described as having a fox face and an intelligent expression, the standard colors of the Pembroke Welsh Corgi are black and tan, red, sable, and fawn, with or without white markings. Pembroke Welsh Corgis are quite a sturdy breed. They have no more health issues than any other breed or any other mixed breed dog. Uh, some people feel that since they have a longer back, they're more prone to back problems, but this actually is not true. Obtaining one of these dogs from a qualified breeder who conducts genetic testing is essential. With good bloodlines and good care, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi can live as long as 13 to 15 years. To find out more about responsible breeding, visit FidoTVChannel.com or download the Fido TV mobile app. Beep, beep. The corgi needs exercise or will feel frustrated and may become restless or excitable. Long rambling walks are great and this medium energy breed does exceptionally well in training for and competing in obedience, agility, fly ball and herding events, just to name a few. They need to be trained, it's better if they have something to do, but these are dogs that will cuddle up with you at night, but as soon as you're ready to go out for a run, they're up and ready and with you. So they, they really love being with their family. They're very family oriented. These aren't dogs that 
you could just put outside. They, they need the company of a family. Physical and mental challenges will keep the PEM in top form. It was bred to herd livestock from one place to another and is why you'll want to keep an eye on it with very small kids around. I've heard um, stories of corgis that have herded and kept the family together in an area and herded them together. But um, yeah, they do actually very well with children. Naturally, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi thrives on farms, but will adapt to a variety of living situations if given regular exercise. Hey girls, hi girls. Hi. They're affectionate with just about everybody, especially their families, but will not beg for attention from anybody who's not interested in them. The Pembroke is also a pretty good watchdog. Its acute senses and big dog bark will do a good job of detecting and deterring intruders. You might expect that a hard-working dog such as the Corgi has a healthy appetite. And you'd be right. Don't overfeed. They have a tendency toward obesity. PWC, Pembroke, PEMS, whatever you want to call the Pembroke Welsh Corgi, it's one of the most agreeable mid-sized dogs in the country. But is it the right woof for you? Tips on training a Corgi when we return. Stay. We'll be right back. The Pembroke will adjust to almost all living arrangements, but may not be well suited to apartment life unless regular exercise is provided daily or a large grassy fenced area is available for playtime. Good for novice owners, the Pem will tolerate being alone, but it doesn't like it. Since it bonds so closely with its family, it needs companionship during the day. Medium energy and not much of a barker, corgis are friendly and affectionate, but can be stubborn. If they're not sure what you want them to do, they'll get it into their heads that they're calling the shots and create a job such as hurting the kids or other dogs. Pembroke Corgis definitely benefit from obedience training. Pembroke Corgis do like order in the household. They'd like to know there's a rule set that they should follow and obedience training really does emphasize that. A Pembroke Corgi looks up to his owner and looks to his owner for direction. If a Pembroke Welsh Corgi isn't given good direction and good training, there's a chance they'll run the household. And that's not a good thing for a dog. A dog needs to be a dog. The, the Pembroke really appreciates an owner who dedicates himself to having the dog thoroughly and well trained. Training a Corgi should be relatively easy because the Pem is smart and eager to please. Reward with praise and small treats and the dog will feel that it's working, which is ideal for this breed. With the sense of keeping busy, the PEM will walk and run until the cows come home, literally. As a herding breed, it needs to burn off energy with daily walks or training for agility, obedience, fly ball, or other competitive events. Talk about a fur baby. The Corgi's thick double coat sheds heavily twice a year. Brushing helps, but you can expect dog hair and some big dust bunnies. A bath once in a while may be needed. The Corgi's short, stocky build can lead to some health concerns. Work with a good breeder who tests for abnormalities and enjoy the Corgi's reputation for being a relatively healthy breed. Learn more at the website of the Pembroke Welsh Corgi Club of America. The Pembroke loves a good meal, but will overeat if you allow it. Feed a high quality formula that caters to the Corgi's unique digestive needs and size, and always ask the breeder for recommendations. For more tips on feeding, visit FidoTVChannel.com or download the Fido TV mobile app. Smart, good looking, confident and affectionate, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi is popular for very good reasons. They make great herding dogs and fantastic family pets. But is this dwarf dog the right wolf for you? If you're looking for a dog so special that once upon a time it was saddled up and ridden by fairies then nothing other than the Pembroke Welsh Corgi will do. This just might be your next dog. Looking a lot like a miniature bulldog, is the pug the right wolf for you? Find out when we come back. Pug people say you don't own a pug, it owns you. 
considering that this handsome breed's origin is pieced together with conjecture and hearsay only adds to its appeal. This is a dog with a past, a long past. <laughs> Thought to have originated in China before 400 BC, the Pug is one of the oldest breeds and bears a resemblance to the Pekingese. It was the pet of Buddhist monks in Japan, and once it appeared in Europe about 1570, it became a favorite in royal courts. In France around 1790, Josephine Bonaparte's pug, Fortune, supposedly carried secret messages under its collar to her husband, Napoleon, while she languished in prison. In 1885, pugs had become popular in the States and were recognized by the American Kennel Club in the toy group. I love pugs. Pugs are appealing. They are friendly, they're sweet, outgoing, quirky, funny. Um, they're handfuls and fun all at the same time. Now 32nd in AKC ranked popularity, this charming little dog doesn't have to work for a living. In fact, its reason for living is to be near its people. They are just uh, the cuddliest, lovingest dog you can imagine. A pug is a background of a lot of other breeds that you probably hadn't thought about, which is Boston's, English Bulldogs, Frenchies. They're, they're in the background of a lot of breeds. And the reason they're so popular is the fact that they are so cuddly and loving. They're just a sweet dog. Pug's personalities are wild. They're, they can go from calm one second to super happy and energetic, loving the, sec the next second. They're very spontaneous creatures. Are you starting to ask yourself if the pug is the right wolf for you? Let's look first at the pug's unique physical features. Its head is large and round, and its bite should be slightly undershot. The wrinkles in its short square muzzle are large and deep. Pug eyes are dark, large, and very prominent, and described by some as soft and solicitous, but when excited, full of fire. Pug ears are thin, small, and soft like black velvet, and there are two kinds, rose and button. And that cute tail, it's curled tightly over the hip, and a double curl is perfection according to breed aficionados. With a coat that's smooth, short, soft, and glossy, this darling little dog seems to have it all going on. But make no mistake, pugs shed. They shed all the time, not just seasonally. That is the one downfall to pugs, is they do shed quite a bit. Although I, I feel like they go through periods of shedding, it's not one consistent shed, but they do have quite a bit of shedding. It's that undercoat that just comes to service and it just, just goes. Weekly brushings are recommended. Or if you're sensitive to dog hair, brush the pug more often. There are two colors of pugs, fawn and black. And even though they both look as if they're concerned about something, it's just the pug's signature mask and expressive eyebrow wrinkles that give that impression. At an average weight of just 14 to 18 pounds, it's the perfect size to take with you everywhere which is good since it would miss you terribly if you left it home alone too often. Want some den den? Huh? Pugs are very happy to see the food bowl being prepared and definitely have a tendency to become fat. And with a pushed in snout that already makes breathing tough, added weight makes it worse. Pugs do not do well with extreme temperatures, whether it's cold or hot, they like it calm in the middle, so cold, they night, like a nice little jacket, and in the heat, they need to pretty much stay inside. It's, it's really hard for them when it comes to the heat. When obtained from a reputable breeder, a healthy and well cared for pug should usually live 13 to 15 years. The importance of a breeder that's credible and well versed in the physiology of the breed cannot be stressed enough. For more information on finding breeders of pug puppies in your area, go to FidoTVChannel.com or download the mobile app. Exercise goes a long way in keeping the pug in good shape. It doesn't need much though, a daily leisurely walk will suffice, and that's a boon to people with busy lifestyles. A fenced yard is a great thing for a pug too, especially when the spirit moves it to race around a bit. Pugs should not be encouraged or allowed to exercise strenuously in hot, humid weather. 
its respiratory system, already compromised by its short snout, will struggle even more when the temperature climbs above 80 degrees. Limit the outdoor exercise to 10 to 15 minutes, or take your pug out in its own stroller. The pug will happily live anywhere you want. It's comfortable in small apartments and will adapt to large houses in the country. Even though it's not much of a watchdog, pugs are keen on alerting the household to odd noises or an intruder. When introduced properly, this breed bonds well with other pets in the household. The pug can be a food thief though, because it loves to eat. There's a lot to learn and love about a pug, and a good source is the Pug Dog Club of America. Check it out. When we come back, we'll investigate why the pug is called a pug. Stay tuned. Pug is a funny name, right? But maybe not when you trace it to its Latin roots of pugnus, meaning fist, which is what the pug's pushed-in snout resembles. But rather than trying to puzzle out where the name came from, there's a Latin phrase that says the most about the pug, multum in parvo. It translates literally to much in little. In today's vernacular, it means a lot of dog in a small space. That sums up the pug. But let's recap to see if the pug is the right woof for you. As long as you're keeping it company, the pug will be happy living in the city or the country. It doesn't need a lot of space, just the space next to you. Pendleton uh, remains to the back of me so he can watch over what I'm doing at all times. And um, I like uh, hearing him snore and purr while I'm working. It's very relaxing. Uh, I consider him my uh, director of first impressions. So uh, as someone approaches the front door for a meeting or uh, a call, uh, he's always the first one at the door. Its even temperament has made the pug a favorite of families, single people, and elderly couples. As a companion dog, its outgoing, loving disposition meshes particularly well with kids. They're just like a child. I mean, they. They attach to you just like one of your own would. Uh, you, you have a little little uh, munchkin run around the house all the time, and that's what they are. I mean, they just they're just very affectionate. Uh, they follow you like uh, Pied Piper all over the place. So they're a lot of fun. Bendy, Bendy, stay, stay. Housebreaking shouldn't be difficult with a pug puppy. Consistent commands, along with treats as rewards, will gain and keep the dog's attention. It's eager to please and win your praise. The pug is a medium energy dog that the AKC classifies as toy. Sometimes it will display a bit of mischief making, but it's mostly to amuse its owners. Moderate exercise such as a daily walk will keep it satisfied and happy. A fenced yard is good for the occasional high energy romp that a pug enjoys from time to time. But all in all, this breed's energy feeds off yours. When you're happy and contented, so is the pug. You'll never have a better best friend than the pug. Where does all that dog hair come from? When it comes to grooming, be prepared. Pugs do shed. And don't wear black clothes when you do this. While its short, shiny coat doesn't require clipping, trimming, or stripping, it does require brushing. At least weekly or even daily if you want to minimize hair flying everywhere. The occasional bath and a little attention to the pug's face are also necessary. As long as you keep the wrinkles clean, and, and uh, that's a daily process, by the way, uh, cleaning all those wrinkles on their face, um, that uh, you won't really have any problems. The pug is generally considered to be a healthy breed. It's sturdy and can live a long life. Come on, Teddy. Some genetic predispositions do not always manifest themselves, but do include hip dysplasia and eye disease. A qualified professional breeder should always be your source for obtaining a pug puppy. It's very important to get a pug from a reputable breeder. Uh, you get one that will meet the standard of AKC, which is printed and you can get online. Um, not only that, you'll have all kind of health issues with uh, a dog that you don't know uh, where it's come from or where, what its background is. The pug has perfected the art of looking as if it hasn't been fed in days. But don't let those soulful eyes fool you. Pugs love to eat and are prone to obesity, especially as they mature. Are you destined to become a pug person? I really like smaller dogs, compact dogs, and I, I just love their face. It's very unique. 
They are, again, low maintenance, they're very cuddly, and, uh, and they're just very good with people. It's not a watchdog or a guard dog, but it is a charming, loving, and loyal breed that only needs one thing in life to be happy, you. It loves to be with you and will strive to keep you amused. It's not a needy dog, but rather one that forges such a strong relationship with its owner that it lives each day for signs of having its love reciprocated. My pug has been uh, very low maintenance, so I'm fortunate to be able to be working with Pendleton and, uh, and be able to do my uh, activities without any kind of muss or fuss because essentially pugs are very low maintenance. They just need a lot of love and a lot of confidence. Are you asking yourself, which whoops for me? And is it looking as if the pug might be it? If so, go to FidoTVChannel.com for more pug tidbits or download the mobile app. Pugs are a, a small toy breed. It's the largest of the toy group. Uh, they're hardy, they're tough, they're not vicious, they're very sweet. They love your family and they will get along with them forever. They, they live to be a, a ripe old age of 14, 15. So they're a real good dog for, for a person to get and uh, uh, become one of the family.